<laughs> this is Emery Tate, Andrew Tate's father. After years of playing chess and building a reputation as one of the best chess players in the world, he decided to settle down and have kids with the woman he fell in love with. Little did he know, two of the kids he raised would later become the most famous brothers to ever live. But how did it all happen? Andrew Tate was born in America, and at a very young age he developed his love for chess. As his interest in the board game grew, so did his appetite for victory. Before he knew it, he was beating kids nearly a decade older than him. Of course, his father Emery Tate played a massive role in helping him learn chess and keeping him motivated. After all, the young prodigy could only be so good because his father was an international master, who taught him everything he needed to know. Things were looking promising for young Andrew, and it looked as though a future chess grandmaster was on the rise. Nothing could stop him. Right? Wrong. In 1997, his parents split up after his father was caught cheating. Him and his mother moved to Luton. And this is where the story of Andrew Tate begins. Andrew found life incredibly mundane if he wasn't constantly doing something to rush his adrenaline, and now that he had lost his only chess coach, he didn't have much else to do. So he was on the search to find something as exciting as chess was, and after careful consideration he decided the closest thing to chess was kickboxing. I think that fighting and chess are extremely similar. To me, they, they aligned, they fulfilled the same gaps in my psyche, right? People always say, how did you go from being a chess player, which everyone sees as geeky, to a kickboxer? And I said, well, chess is chess is one on one battle, right? That's all it is. There's no luck involved. There's no team. There's no wind that can blow the ball. There's no, you know, it's one on one. It's a fight. If you lose, you messed up. And fighting feels the same for me. So for me, I thought, well, OK, I, I can't learn chess well enough without a coach. And I can't find a coach in the UK who I trust to teach me chess, but I can find a coach who can teach me to kick people's ass. So Andrew ran four miles to the gym every day. As exhausting as his routine was, he never had any clear goal. He did not want to win any world title. He simply showed up to the gym every day to escape from the simulation he found life to be. However, it was inevitable for someone of his caliber and work ethic to eventually win a world title fight. Despite what you think, the life of a four-time kickboxing champion isn't as glamorous as people make it out to be. Even though he had hundreds of girls around the world adore him, he was struggling financially. He tried his best to let it go and not let it get in the way of his career, until one day he woke up and decided enough is enough. Andrew told his kickboxing coach he would be on leave for a few months to focus on other endeavors. Now he really needed to make money, and quick. Since he won't be fighting, he didn't have any income to rely on anymore to pay his bills. But what could he do? He had no degree, he dropped out of school at a young age, and he has very little business experience. There was no hope. Or so, it seemed. Andrew was browsing through a website when he came across an advert that read, Talk to Girls Live. At that moment, Andrew figured out how he was going to get rich. Even though fighting didn't pay him well, it did bestow upon him multiple girlfriends who were loyal to him. He decided to seize this opportunity and sell the dream to them, saying stuff like, we're going to be rich together. Lucky for Andrew, this was in the early 2010s, when making money via the internet was unheard of. So he had very little competition to worry about. Surely enough, this was his big break. As controversial and exploitative as it was, him and the girls who worked for him were getting paid money no one had seen before, so no one could complain. Andrew kept growing his empire of girls to build his business even more. His brother even chipped into this scheme after realizing how much potential it had. The brothers were seen to be making up to $5,000 every single day with this system. As Andrew got richer, his network of people grew and he began to meet wealthier and more important people. That was all fine and dandy until he met some of the most important people he would ever meet. Three brothers who owned a casino brand, which had hundreds of locations opened all over Europe. They were generating at least $10 million in revenue each and every day. Andrew was eager to be a part of this money maker, and he approached the brothers and tried to convince them to let him have a piece of the pie. However, they denied him as they saw no use in having him on board. 
After all, saying they were successful is an understatement, and inviting someone they don't even know would be a massive risk. Even though the odds were against him, Andrew was persistent and finally came up with a deal they could not refuse. He would open up the casino next to their biggest competitor, which already shook them to their core, as no one is ever brave enough to do that. On top of which, he would deal with the costs all by himself, and give the brothers a percentage of turnover, meaning they would have no risk and everything to gain. After some consideration, they accept his offer and let him open up his casino. Andrew sees this as a win. Now, he just has to outcompete their competitor, which is easier said than done. Thankfully, him being the businessman that he is, he comes up with an idea. He opened up a Starbucks in front of the casino, with a sign that read, Free Coffee. This entices people to come over and instead of paying for coffee, they gamble their money. The casino got bigger and bigger until it finally defeated its competitor in every possible metric. The brothers now knew Andrew wasn't playing about and he had a keen eye on business, thus they let him open up several more casinos. It was at this point that Andrew was richer than he could ever imagine, and he kept dumping all his money on cars, houses, and other luxuries to thrive off of. This was the life he had always wanted to live, and he made it a reality. From homelessness and immense poverty, starting from rock bottom with no one but his brother by his side, he had successfully managed to climb his way up to the very top and he was reaping the benefits of his hard work. Any possession or luxury he had dreamed of could be purchased and sent to his home in a blink of an eye. In spite of all of that, he still felt as though something was missing, but he didn't quite know what it was. Andrew wanted a taste of internet fame, but he wasn't very experienced as far as YouTube goes. He had already amassed a few thousand subscribers in his online school, but he was far from famous. He wanted an easy yet fast way to go viral, but for the longest time, there wasn't one. Until, TikTok was introduced. This app was a game changer for video creation. It revolutionized short-formed content that anyone could make. Andrew saw this as an opportunity and created a new way for people on his platform to make money. Simply repost videos about him on TikTok and promote his online school, and for every member that joins, you get a commission. He managed to kill two birds with one stone. Not only would he become more famous this way, but he would also have more people joining his school. However, things didn't exactly work out as he planned. Even though he became undeniably famous, the world of TikTok villainized him and saw him as evil and misogynistic, and a lot of the things he had said in the past came back to bite him. Since he wasn't familiar with fame and dealing with hate, he thought the best thing to do was to ignore everything. However, one thing led to another and big tech companies became wary of him, and after enough messing about, he got banned on nearly every single app, including TikTok and Instagram. Surely, he's gone. Right? But no, since his fame was not fueled by him, but other people reposting his content, he could simply do the same thing once again. The only difference was he posted the content through a relatively unknown video sharing app, called Rumble. He had his followers join him there and once again, post TikToks about him. Things had backfired on the big tech companies, and he became more famous than ever before. Andrew had reached the pinnacle of his internet career, and his mission was finally complete. 